What's up guys? You are looking at me at a kind of strange angle today because I'm going to be sharing with you my computer setup that I use for editing my YouTube videos as well as many other things. Uh, before I share with you the actual computer setup though, I want to share with you a tiny bit of the history behind this setup. I bought this computer that I'm going to show you in a minute here about seven months ago and I've been loving it. But before that, I went through quite a few different computers trying to find one that actually worked and actually met my needs. I had an old Toshiba laptop that I loved that I used for probably seven years and it didn't have the greatest specs. Specifically the RAM was teeny tiny but that computer lasted so long and it very rarely froze up. It was just kind of slow because the RAM was small. So when that computer finally gave up the ghost I decided to try some other computers, looked around, tried a few things, had a lot of trouble finding a computer that seemed like it actually had good specs and was built well and I finally ended up buying a Mac and for a hot minute I enjoyed the Mac because it was built really really well but it had a few issues some things that going from Windows to Mac I was just not loving and then I made a kind of controversial video about why I was switching away from Max and things about it that I didn't like. And you can go watch that controversial video if you want to. It's basically just controversial because I explained reasons why I didn't like Mac. But uh, then I bought this computer right here which is an HP laptop obviously. It has pretty good specs. I think it has 12 gigabytes of RAM and it worked pretty well for a little while and I did like it a lot better than the Mac but it has some issues, specifically some issues with the touchscreen and also Premiere was always crashing on it and Premiere is what I use to actually edit my videos. So after battling with that for most of a year, I finally decided to invest in a desktop, which I'm really, really, really glad that I did. And the reason why I didn't do that earlier was mostly because we were traveling around. I wanted something I could carry with me, but we settled down. We rented a house and so I bought a desktop and this was after looking at laptop after laptop after laptop and even buying quite a few of them and having to return them because they were just constantly crashing. And so I decided to take a different tact because most of the desktop options that I was seeing seemed like they just weren't a good value for the specs that they had. The specs really weren't what I wanted them to be and they were more money that I wanted to spend. So what I ended up doing was to go kind of a non-traditional route and I decided to buy a gaming PC even though this girl don't game but I figured gaming needs a lot of graphic capabilities and I need a lot of graphic capabilities so maybe that would work and if it didn't work I just have to return it and try again so what I did was I actually ended up buying a computer from Costco that is a gaming PC I bought the cyber power PC GXI 9989C gaming desktop with an Intel Core i7 GeForce GTX 1060. Um, and so honestly, I don't know a whole ton about computers, but um, this computer had 16 gigabytes memory, a one terabyte hard drive, plus a 240 gigabyte solid state drive, um, and that Core i7. I know that those are not top of the line specs, but I thought that if this was designed for gaming, then hopefully it could handle my graphics for my video editing, and sure enough it has. Uh, not that it is all that much to look at, but there it is, the CyberPower PC. Um, it is a pretty big computer. The fan in it isn't too terribly loud, um, but it certainly is louder than some computers I've had in the past. But it gets the job done and it basically never crashes. In the seven months I've had it, I think maybe it's crashed twice. Um, but it was a really minor crash when it did, like just restarted it and it was totally fine. Uh, but I'm editing in Premiere on it, doing graphics on it in After Effects and it's working and it's not crashing and even Premiere isn't crashing. And I've mentioned that in a comment on a video recently and a bunch of people said, liar, Premiere always crashes, but honestly, it doesn't. Um, I believe Premiere has crashed one time in the seven months that I've been using it on this computer. Let me also share with you though the monitor that I have because I've gotten a lot of questions about that. Here's the monitor. Um, 
This is the monitor they actually bought. Um, it costs $350 from Costco. It's the Samsung 27-inch curved QHD monitor. Um, would I recommend it? Uh, yes, I like it. I think it's a really good size, and I like the curved screen. It does make it easier to see, so that your eyes aren't having to adjust their focus as you're looking from one, like from the middle to the far sides. And so the color does look more consistent across it. I also think it looks pretty cool. The only thing that isn't perfect about it is that the resolution could be better. So here is what the monitor looks like from the back. As you can see, it has this nice curved screen and I really like it I'm continuing to use it and um, I would recommend it if you are looking for a large monitor to edit on and I would definitely recommend this PC tower obviously I've only used it for seven months so I don't know for sure exactly how long it will continue to last for but so far I've had zero issues with it and all the laptops that I tried before this had a lot of issues so I'm really happy with this decision that I made it has saved me so much time because this computer is so much faster and I work online so every minute that I can save not waiting for things to load or things to render or things to upload or download, which obviously has a little bit more to do with your internet speed, um, but every minute that I can save working online is a precious moment saved in my life, a moment that I can spend doing other things aside from just working all the time. So if you're looking to maybe upgrade from your laptop or from an old PC tower, or maybe you wanna switch from Mac, then yeah, I would recommend this setup. Now let me show you real quick the keyboard and the mouse that I use. Now I picked these purely for aesthetic reasons, so I'm not claiming that these are the best quality, although they are holding up fine so far. Um, so here's the keyboard that I have, and as you can see, it looks kind of like a Mac keyboard just because I wanted that white and metallic aesthetic for the purpose of my office, not because I cared about having it look like a Mac keyboard, actually. Um, but I just got this from Amazon. It is the iClever brand, and I'll leave a link to that down below if you want to see that on Amazon if you want to get it for yourself. And then this mouse right here is the Jellycomb brand and it is white and gold. And again, just picked it for the aesthetic, not actually like the greatest mouse in the world. But if you've ever looked for a white keyboard in the past, then you will know that it is really difficult to find one that is white and doesn't have giant keys and look really, really old school, which of course is fine if that's what you're going for. I just wanted something a little bit more sleek and modern looking to match the aesthetic of my office. If you can possibly upgrade your internet speed, I did not realize how much faster internet could be. If you're a person who works online, we were paying maybe $50 a month for basically the, the slowest internet that we could get. And it had, you know, started at $30 a month and then they increased it, increased it, and it was at $50 a month. And then we moved and there basically wasn't a slow internet option here. So we were forced to get a much more expensive internet package. And I think we're paying about $100 per month now, which seems to me like a lot of money to pay for internet, but this internet is lightning fast. And just to give you an example, I upload videos to YouTube a lot. And when I was uploading them on my old internet, it would typically take at least one hour, if not two plus hours to upload a video to YouTube. Uh, and then we were traveling in Europe and it was very, very hard to find fast internet in Europe. A lot of places that we were staying, I couldn't upload a video at all because if I tried, it said that it was going to take over 24 hours or even over 48 hours and that was just impossible. So anyway, but now on this fast internet, my YouTube videos upload in about six minutes. So we went from more than 60 minutes to six minutes. And let me just tell you, that has given me my life back. So if you can possibly upgrade your internet to something faster and it will cost you maybe $50 more a month, if you spend very much time uploading and downloading things from the internet, I would say give yourself a gift, spend that $50 because your time, the hours you will save is worth far more than $50 a month. So kind of aside from the point of this video, but, uh, just pro tip if you happen to be a video creator like moi. So <laughs> thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about this computer setup that I have right now, or you wanna see me actually edit videos, then let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I'll see you guys next time.